Hello there. Thank you very much for joining us for yet another episode of the program Ben Talks. And today we are in Delta States. Uh, you know what we do on Ben Talks? We bring you the best brains that you have in Nigeria. And for us to do that, we don't remain in one place. We go about looking for them. And some of them, they are like gold diamond. You don't see them on the surface. They are somewhere very, very deep. You have to work hard for you to get them. So today on the program, we'll be talking to a scholar by all standards. He knows what he's doing and he has reason to, I don't know, maybe he also has uh, some other ambition, but he is going to tell us when you, you meet him. He has reason to the peak of his career in quotes now, because when you become a professor, I wonder what you want to become again. Maybe you want to become God or something. But when it comes to knowledge, as far as uh, the academic world is concerned, he has reason to one of the top. I don't know, but I think they also retire and they also do some other things and they become emeritus, if you ask me. So today we are in Delta State and uh, we'll be talking to the rector of Delta State Polytechnic, Otefe Ogara. Uh, if you are conversant with uh, Nigeria and Delta State, you will know that uh, Ogara is a great place. We are in the news for the very, very positive things. So without uh, wasting your time, We'll go for a short break. When we come back, we'll be meeting our guests. Don't go away. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us again. Like I said before we went for that short break, I said we are meeting someone that is a scholar by our standard. He is the rector of Delta State Polytechnic, Otefe Ogara. His name is uh, Professor Emmanuel Apoyi Ogujo. So help me and welcome my guest, Prof. You are welcome to Ben Talks. Thank you very much for having uh, me your show. Before we go into uh, what we are here today, I want to first of all congratulate you for adding another feather. And I'm wondering, I'm looking at you now, I've heard your name very far and wide, and I'm asking today, I'm face to face with you, and I'm wondering, all this feather that is gathering, where does he want to keep them? Because from, from the little record I have, your cap should be full of so many feathers, by now, but he just added another one as a fellow of the Nigeria Society of Engineers. So, on behalf of Ben Television all over the world, I want to really congratulate you. Thank you. Yeah. Now, for those that don't know you, who is, uh, I don't know, you know, in Nigeria, we like a lot of appellation. You are an engineer. For you to be a fellow of the Nigeria Society of Engineers, it shows that you are distinguished, you have paid your price, you have paid your dues, you know what you're doing, and you are a professor. So, who is Professor Emmanuel? Uh, Professor Emmanuel Apoyi Ugujo, just like every other Nigerian, I am born in a volume uh, where really the south local government of the Tassos. Um, and by the grace of God, uh, I attended our ship for the training in 1989 to 1991, uh, where I graduated with the third best university, engineering and electrical electronic engineering. From there, I proceeded to University of Benin, where I obtained my first degree of second degree and also the third degree as PhD in power and machines. And I grew through the ranks. Uh, by the grace of God, I got one accelerated promotion and I became a full professor of power, electrical power engineering uh, in 2013. And, uh, by March 26, 2017, I was appointed as the first substantive rector of Delta State Polytechnic, Otefe Ogara. By His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Delta State, Senator Dr. Fine Atoko. How come everybody is talking about you? What are you using to bribe them? <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, I want to appreciate all the rectors who have been appointed, did their bit, and then came to my town, and building on the foundation that they have laid. Uh, there is no magic about it. The magic is according to Albert Einstein, that the Senate is doing something over and over again, but expecting new results. So our philosophy is that if we have something that we are doing and we are not getting results, 
we do it in another way, in order for us to get results. If there's no way of doing, we are getting results. We find a better way to do it to get a better result. I think that is the philosophy. Okay, mm -hmm. so you are result driven. Yes. This is your paradigm shift, your mindset. Where did you get it from? Well, first of all, I think it has to do with my upbringing. My father and my mother were very, uh, you know, they are very morally driven parents. And uh, they, they have no room for pranks. And then from there, I got enlisted into engineering since 1989 to date. And uh, there's uh, an engineering philosophy that is embedded in the blood of every engineer. We are problem solvers. And all the training we receive from when you enter the, the faculty of engineering to when you graduate is all about using your knowledge of mathematics and sciences to see how you can solve problems. So solution to problems are the ingredients for the development. So when we see problem, we don't run, engineers don't run away from problem. Okay. Yeah. We mostly run away from problem, mm. especially when it is when you are operating a kind of a political appointment, you feel, let me do my best and leave the rest. But unlike others, coming into Delta State Polytechnic Gotefe, it has been one project or the other, one innovation, one thing or the other. What is driving you? I know there are problems. How come those problems are not pulling you back? The ability to provide solutions that overcome the problem makes you to stand out. Okay. Yes, you must provide when the challenges come. Because some people don't want to call them problems. And when those challenges come, through innovation, uh, through teamwork, through application of some knowledge that are so fundamental, uh, you provide solutions that will get those uh, uh, challenges or problems resolved, and then you move ahead. So there must be realizable uh, solutions. You know, when there are challenges or problems, in the circle space, yeah, there are several solutions, but you begin to look at it, which of these solutions will produce a better result. So that is the solution you apply. We have several of those examples. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I also have several of uh, <laughs> those examples. Now, how have you been able to manage your human and material resources in Motefe? Yes. There is no doubt in the whole world, not just in developing countries like ours, uh, resources are scarce. Resources are scarce. So what you do is to be able to make sure see the resources are scarce, they are well applied, and then you, re you reduce wastage. So when you, re every system have losses. Whether it is your uh, plumbing system, water is going through, has losses. Whether it's electricity going through the supply cables, there are losses. Whether you are looking at the financial system, how it is being, how do you apply the limited fund, there are losses in the application. So if the systems are operated, the losses can never be zero. There are no system that have zero losses. There are no system that have zero losses. Even the systems uh, they are trying to create now to make sure that uh, you can transport electricity without losses, um, it has not really fully been uh, put into. Um, uh, to use. good use, mm -hmm. and that is the right word to, to, to use. So every every humanly operated system have losses. So your ability to, to reduce the losses will make you to have a higher output. Because okay. the losses are deducted from the input. Okay. This is what is remaining that comes to your output. Because, so since you don't have so much control over the input, but you have control over the losses. So you can reduce the losses. And then your output will be increased. Your output will be great. Now, yeah. what about those that are benefiting from those losses? If, if, you, if you see any gap anywhere, uh, from my research and my observation for a very long time, someone is benefiting somewhere. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to handle them? People that want to sabotage your efforts, people that want to make you look like a failure because you being a failure gives them some kind of advantage over some areas. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to handle them? Uh, such people are everywhere. 
There are people with derivative does not want the system to um, to grow. They are there. You cannot get any system that you don't have them. One, you talk to their conscience that this system belongs to us. If it collapses today, we will collapse with it. <laughs> now, if the system collapses today, we will all collapse uh, with it. And then that will not also get everybody uh, on the boat of success. But you must now make sure that those solutions we are providing are so conspicuous that people cannot deny them. Mm. If you want example, I can give you some examples. Go ahead. Yes. And upon resumption, I realized that, um, uh, that uh, the amount of money we spend on diesel, given the, the, the load, the electrical load of the system, um, is on the high side. And then what do I do? I have to talk to those who are in the Department of Works that this is unrealistic. And the purchasing officer, I said, this is unrealistic. As an electrical engineer, I know the consumption rate of that generator uh, as a fraction of the load that is placed on it. Though it's not cost and varies, but you have an average idea of what the consumption should be. And then the first thing, uh, the first thing, uh, the, the management led by myself did was to change the supply, the, the uh, supplier of diesel to the polytechnic. And then when we did that, there was uh, over 50% drop wow. in the cost of the diesel. Like I want to rightly say, people are benefiting from it. Yeah. And then um, we realized that when there's public uh, power supply restored, they also leave the generator running. So we have to get uh, uh, an alarm system. Now once the public utility power supply is restored, there's an alarm system that uh, got to that. And the open is aware that the generators need to be switched off. And then uh, after that, we still have some very few elements who are still angry. And then they went ahead and then the, they started cutting the amount people that supply some of our transformers. And uh, I said those who are not got benefited from the diesel, through the cost of the repair, they will not be benefited. Which means that we are still suspending the losses. And then I have to say, okay, if any of such uh, thing occur, I'll bring somebody from outside to do it. So the money, they will not be looking for a job for somebody outside. So at that point, it's stop. That is where we are. Uh, thank you very much. In case you are just joining us, we are on Ben Talks and we are still talking to Professor Emmanuel Apoyi Obujo. He is the Rector of Delta State Polytechnic, Otefe Ogara, and uh, he has been telling us how he has been able to contain a lot of uh, losses and SSs. I, I, I like what he said when he said that in every system, there are losses. The input might not equal the output. So what you do for your output to be more is for you to make sure that you cut down on the losses so that you get more out at the end of the day. We'll go for a short break. When we come back, Prof will still be talking to us. Don't go away. Welcome back. Thank you very much. You are still on to Ben Talks. And like I said at the beginning, we are still talking to Professor Emmanuel Apoyi Obujo. He is the rector of Delta State Polytechnic, Ogara. And uh, he has, been, he has been telling us a lot of things about how he got to where he is and uh, how he has been able to manage a lot of things. Prof, you are welcome back. Thank you very much. Now, talking about academics, from the look of things, you, you chew academics, so no need to talk so much about this. What, do you think there is a gap right now between schools, educational system, during your time as a student and what we have today in Nigeria? Do you think there is any problem? Do you think there is a need to be worried? Yes, there's need to be worried. Uh, there's need to be worried because the kind of things uh, we experience in our time, we, we gradually notice that they are, they are no longer there. And uh, there's need to be worried. Mm -hmm. One, we are worried about the state of equipment in our laboratories all over the country and workshops. We are worried about the caliber of people, the kind of training received by the uh, people who are training this year. So we are worried. So you can see that, you know, 
these equipment have life span. These laboratory equipment and uh, the workshop equipment, they have life span. And you see that they got age and spoiled, no replacement. So you now see that as the year come by, the number of workshops, the number of uh, experiments done by these students are reducing. Because the equipment is not working, you cannot use it for the experiment. Polytechnic education created that middle class mm. where with your ND you are capable, you can do some things. Mm. But you know, you know, you still have this uh, uh, I call it onshore offshore dichotomy in the university and uh, uh, the HND problem. So is it the government that is frustrating the system or we are not just appreciating what we have? Uh, I don't think it is uh, it is the, the government that is uh, frustrating the system. Where we are getting it wrong, we must know the level of development that we are and train the manpower to solve the challenges associated with that level. Let me tell you one short story. When I was head of the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering University of Benin, they were running a program, Diploma in Computer Engineering. So we, we have the same staff that are teaching um, computer engineering at the undergraduate level. There are the same staff that also teach the students at the diploma in computer engineering level. And there was a particular day, a parent walked into my office. And he said, two of the children went through my department that one did computer engineering at the undergraduate level. Why won't they diploma? They had a top child. And he also wanted the child to come and do uh, read the uh, uh, computer engineering. That the one in charge, that to him in the house, that the one that did diploma in computer engineering is the engineer. Why the one who did uh, a degree in uh, computer engineering is not an engineer? And I said, why? He said that the one that did diploma in computer engineering can is open computer. You see that, solve problems in it. You say, but no who did, who had a degree in uh, computer engineering, would just be speaking grammar. You cannot solve any problem in the computer. And I said, no, that the one that did diploma is a technician. The one that have degree in computer engineering is the engineer. And you know why? You know why? You know why? Because demand is reacting to our level of development. That was what we were reacting to and what he expects to be done. Because of the level of, our, of our development, we do more of repairs, maintenance, installations. We do more of repairs, maintenance, installations. It's not that we don't do design, we do, but a good percentage of work required of us by God's labor of our development is how to repair, how to maintain, how to install. The level of our development, hmm? the engineer is trained using his level of mathematics and sciences to develop an analyze system, which is at the level of most of the developed countries. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Very well. So by our development, we are uh, we have things that need to be maintained and repaired more. So to the man on the street, the man who can fix his television when it is not working is the engineer. It is not the man that is telling you all the kind of functional system, the speed at which the electron is moving. The man is not interested in that. Okay. So you so saw when we're developing the curriculum for the diploma student, we develop them to be trained as technicians. So while training their brain, a good percentage of that training of the training of the training goes into their hands. I know that we used to to, to assemble computer. We bring the past together. Eh? Then they connect, the student connects it together, we power it. Then if it's not working, we troubleshoot. Finally, it works. But 
the one in the undergraduate. We are telling you why the speed, the speed at which the fan is rotating in order to cool the system, the amount of it being produced. And those things are required at the level of the development of the computer, which you don't have to trust in those. Right. And that's why we see this crop of people, we say they don't do anything. When they cross over, they become the best. So, so, that, so we must begin to redesign our curriculum. Okay. I know of universities, after spending three years in the university, they have loaded you with the theory you require. All the other two years is in the industry. You now move between the industry and, and the university. So by the time the man graduates and goes to the industry, it's not, nothing is strange there. One, the industries we have cannot even take our students. You know that they reject our students. The same industry we are training our students for. When they send them there for IT, they reject them. Where do you want the students? The laboratories are not, are not well equipped. Where do you now want them to know the practical from? And these are not magic. I said some very few who have to go out of their way. They have a passion for, for the profession. Professional. That we have to go outside the theory, they go, and in our time when we are in the when we did school, we go to the workshops. Not the school workshops, so those people who have workshops in town who were repairing electronics, we go there with small stipend we were given to Robert, then we stay there, and we stay there. And then you know what is happening there. When you come to the class, eh, it is not knowledge from textbook to class, knowledge from the feet, means with knowledge from the book, it becomes balanced. For the few period that you will be there, they will, God will give you time. Because even if you stay there for 20 years, it's still very, very few time. Yes. So what, what, what are we looking at in that school? We are looking at, uh, let us say, for example, the next uh, a few years to be one of the best polytechnic in the country. Yeah. When I mean best, I am not talking of uh, in terms of infrastructures. I'm talking in terms of uh, standard, quality of uh, our output, quality of our product. And uh, it is manifesting already. Uh, last year, uh, we got an award from NUJ Waribrand. Uh, students came for IT from different universities and polytechnic. And at the end of the IT, a very serious test and examination and interview was organized for all the students. The students from my school came for second and third. Wow. Who were not even aware when they did that uh, test. And as you also are aware, recently we have also been uh, uh, the Spanish organization that did with Prometric and Rankic. It uh, then became one of the top 50 in the country. We are 37 on the list. And uh, we are first in the say by that rank. So the, like as I said earlier on, if I'm not getting results, we do it differently. And let me tell you one example. Upon resumption, I discovered that the quality of our part-time program is not uh, compared to the full-time uh, programs. Little time. Uh, is given to the part time students. What did we do? We now said, okay, from the academic board, we agree that the same lecturer that teaches the a student a course in full time and teach the same student to the part time student. And then, because it's the same uh, content they have received, they will write the same exam under the same condition. And uh, initially, when I suggested that, almost 99% of my members of academics board said it will not work. And I said, it's why it's higher institution. If it doesn't work, we'll find out why it did. Uh, it's not work. I uh, uh, yes. What do we need to do? To improve system. Everything we're enjoying today, we are not as uh, beautiful, as efficient as they are. And we experimented it. How do you unwind? How do you, how do you keep yourself and your family going? Uh, well, uh, you see, we all have 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. Even the friends of America 
as good as it is, I have to empower. I is able to use to empower what to achieve all the things that, that the all usually achieve as president of that country. So it's a question of uh, proper time management. I am a very strong member of the Polytechnic. In short, I established the Polytechnic Staff Club. Wow. And then from the University of Benin, from which I came, I'm also a very strong member and I've been given several awards from the Senior Staff Club. Uh, the, the club is a place where you unwind. Uh, when you go to the club, you hang your titles at the entrance of the club. Nobody sees anybody and begin to bow down as they do in the department. Everybody is equal. So after the day job, we'll go to the club. And then we ask. Talk jokes, things that will make us to laugh, and then have one or two drinks. You know, find our way home. To go and face the one waiting on for us at home. For the, but the, the family up front is also waiting. <laughs> it's also there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Prof. Ra- yes. As a word, as a way of uh, rounding off, mm. uh, if you were to advise the students all over Nigeria and abroad, what would you tell them? And if you were also to advise the government on our academic system and some of the way to take care of the lapses that we have, what would you tell them as a way of rounding off the program? All right, for students, I will tell them that uh, I will tell them that there is no shortcut to success. Hard work doesn't kill; it prepares you for the work ahead. And as you are going higher, the responsibility are also increasing. You are in primary one; you go to primary two. Primary two will be easy. You up up the things you are going to see in primary two. So you have to follow up. And they have a very short period to develop themselves. Thereafter, they will begin to earn the fruit of that uh, of their labor. So they should put all they have into uh, the education, go to attend lectures, have your notes, do your assignment, you know, make your lecturers happy, make the non teaching staff who are working because they are working to develop you, make them happy so that they can give you your best. And uh, they should also know that anything that is against that, eh, they should remove their hands from it. Courtesy doesn't help, it ends in pains and sorrow. The Bible says, walk and pray. Walk as if work will make you to succeed. Pray as if prayers will make you to succeed. And then for the government, they should take our educational system very serious. We know this are difficult, but they should remember us that we are producing people who are going to run the system. Those who are going to work in the oil industries, or those who are working there, they are the product of the system. You see, they are badly produced. to also affect the production of the oil. Even if it is uh, other manufacturing sector, it will also affect them. Because the machines will not operate themselves. It is human being that is going to operate them. And those people are not given the proper training. We are going to have problems. And I want to say that we need to review our curricular system uh, such that it is tinted towards acquisition of skill. And not just having a, a half first class in this, I have to want in this. I have to do that. No. To go with skills. Because what we need at the level of our development is skills. And that is what the state government is trying to do in Delta State. They ensure that every student who is graduated from a higher institution make sure that they have one skill or the other, different from their area of specialization. Which means that I'm an electrical engineer. By the time I graduate, I should be able to. To, to uh, if it's bad, then I've chosen. Eh? By the time I'm leaving the place, I should be able to, to, to operate a badly salon. Everybody cannot be looking for a job. People must be developed that we create job. The government cannot employ everybody. It's not, there's no country in the world where government employs all the citizens. In short, a good percentage of those who, uh, who are employed are usually in the private sector. So the private sector needs to be encouraged. By way of no, by way of uh, of uh, uh, of the well secured environment, by way of uh, making sure that this is, uh, by, uh, is available, by way of making sure that the youths are good. When these are there, then private people will come. If the environment is secure, there is a uh, supply, the youths are good. Because here, the population we have here should not it should be used to an advantage. And not disadvantage. Because we have population, labor should be cheap here. So companies should come, because labor will be cheap. 
Today, mm. you, you were made a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Mm. Very briefly, how do you feel about that? And what is what, what will it make you do going forward? Uh, well, uh, sometime about two years ago or so, I was the main fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Production uh, Engineers. Um, but uh, today, I'll be conferred with the Distinguished Fellowship of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. This is the highest of all of them. All those other fellows you know, we hear in engineering, they are all children of uh, of fellow Nigerian yes, Society of Engineers. I'm yes. not saying they are not important, but the peak of it is the fellow. And the fellow is, uh, I am happy, because it shows that the society appreciates uh, contribution to the development of engineers. I have produced several PhDs, uh, several master's degree holders, several uh, first degree holders, and uh, many diploma students. Uh, and uh, also in the field, we have also contributed so much. I think this is to appreciate, uh, is to appreciate uh, me and others that were, uh, you know, uh, conferred. And it's also telling us that we should go and do more for the development of engineering in Nigeria and beyond. Uh, Professor, thank you very much uh, thank for you. your time. Thank you. Until another episode of the program, Ben Talks, I remain your anchor person, Festus A. Girog and FFN. And you know what? Be a good global citizen wherever you go to. Cheers.